Hello, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva, and today we are going to use this for our project. Um, this is a vertical freeform netting bracelet, and since it's, uh, I'm filming this in December, so I figured I'd give it kind of Christmassy colors, so yes, this would be a great gift to make for yourself or for others. I like to gift myself with bracelets too. So anyway, um, we're going to make this project today, and I will show you how to do the whole thing. Um, meanwhile, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, I hope you'll do so. Let's go ahead and make this bracelet. Here's what you're going to need for this project. You are going to need three different colors of size 11 seed beads. You will need to have one coordinating color of size 8 seed beads. You'll need the clasp of your choice, a pair of scissors, a needle. I'm using a size 11. You could probably use a, a 10 or a 12. You will also need some thread. I happen to be using Fireline in six pound today. And you will need a piece of paper about three quarters of an inch wide. And uh, I will show you what to do with it. We're starting with a total of 14 of the size 8 seed beads, and I've put them in two groups of seven. What we're going to need to do is make uh, two ladder stitches, two rows of ladder stitching. To do that, you're going to have a short length of thread on your needle, pick up two of the size 8 seed beads, string them on, and then go back through the first of the two seed beads. That will get you something that looks like this. Let's see if we can get that in focus. So it's going to give you something like this. And you can see my working thread is coming down here. My tail is what I'm holding on to up here. I'm going to take my thread or my needle and put it up through this outside bead. So now it looks like this. My thread is coming down from this outside bead. I'm going to pick up another size 8. I'm going to put my needle down through this bead. So with a ladder stitch you're always going to put your needle through whatever the opposite of the side you're coming out of. So I'm coming down from below. I'm putting my needle up through this third bead. Getting another one. Losing my bead. <laughs> so my thread's coming out of the bottom. I put my needle up through the top along with my new seed bead. And you're going to do this for all seven beads. All right, so I'm to my last seed bead, coming up through it, and if you'll notice, it looks a little on the wonky side. Let's show my wonkiness up close. What I need to do is make sure that these aren't as wonky. To do that, I will take my needle and thread. My thread is coming out of this last seed bead. I'm going to go back up through, and let's get this really close up. I'm going to go up through the one that's right next to it. Pull tight. And what we're going to be doing is going back through all the beads in an up and down motion, you know, snake-like pattern. And in doing this, it is going to stabilize this row. So by the time that I'm at the other end, it's not going to look so wonky. And the thing that you need to remember is pull snugly after each one. So, a lot less wonky looking. Now what to do is you're going to be tying off this thread. So I'm coming out of the bottom of this one. And let's see if we can get it even closer so you can see this better. I'm coming out of the bottom of this one, taking my needle, and I'm going to go ahead and do a half hitch underneath this particular thread. 
So I'm going under, putting my needle through the loop, pull tight, up through this one and then down again and do another half hitch. And then I will go ahead and snip the thread. I will go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now to talk about our little piece of paper. What you're going to do is you're going to take this, you're going to put it around your wrist, and you're going to find, um, you know, you're going to match it up and find out whatever length it is, match it around your wrist, to be about the length that you want your bracelet to be. So in other words, do it at about the spot you're going to be wearing your bracelet. Take your piece of paper and then you're going to go ahead and take your clasp, see what length your clasp is, and then you're going to cut. So you're going to, and the reason that we're doing this is to give you a really good idea of where you're going to be or how long you're going to be doing your vertical netting. So take your, that length right here, so you'd want to cut it right about here. And then that will be the length that you're going to need to make your bracelet. Now I've poured out a bunch of seed beads. So the size 11s and I have a few size 8s up here. I've got one of my ladder stitch ends and I've attached a piece of thread to it. So I've got my thread coming down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up random beads. Um, doesn't matter what colors you use in what order. I'm just picking up random size 11s, and every once in a while I'll throw in a size 8. But I don't throw them in all that often. Now you're going to go ahead and pick up a length of beads. Yikes, dropping things today already. You're going to be picking up a length that is tangled around... <laughs> tangle around my camera um, that is going to be as long as your piece of paper. You can see that I have my length of beads to be the length of my piece of paper. So I am going to take my second set of ladder stitches and I'm going to figure out which is the top and which is the bottom. <laughs> the area with all the knots, okay. This is the bottom, so I'm going to put my needle up through the end bead. So it looks like this. So now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down through the next gold bead or the next size 8 bead. So I'm going down through this one. And this is what it's like so far. So I've got my strand coming up this way. I've come up through this bead over the top and I'm coming down through the next bead in line, next size eight. Here comes the fun part. This is the part that I always like. Oh, and make sure that you pull your thread snugly because I just now had a length of thread showing. All right. So, to do this vertical netting, we're going to be doing the netting this way, lengthwise. So, I'm going to pick up, um, I'm going to call it, say, four beads. Pick up four of the size 11s. And let me see if I can get this a little bit closer up for you. All right, I've got four of the size 11s. Now I'm going to count four size 11s on this one. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to skip the fourth one and go into the fifth one. So this red bead. So I'm going into it. And pull your thread. Oh, and by the way, I didn't mention how long to um, cut your length of thread for when you're starting this netting part. 
I like to use what I call a wingspan, and that's just I take a piece of paper or take a piece of thread, um, put my arms apart, and that's about it. It's about five and a half feet, roughly. Do whatever is comfortable for you. So I've got mine looking like this. Now I'm going to pick up, oh, let's call it six beads. So, and again, random colors. I'm going to go one. Okay, start counting after the bead that you're on. So I'm coming out of this bead and start counting with the next one. So one, two, three, four, five, six is this green one. I'm going to put my needle through this next red one. This is a really easy way of doing, uh, of learning vertical netting. This is free form. You don't have to worry about counting beads for the, your initial strand or anything like that because what you're going to do is just pick up random lengths of beads. So this next one I'm going to pick up three. This is where my thread's coming out of so I'm counting one, two, three. I'm going into this next bead, the fourth bead. So basically whatever number of beads you pick up is the number of beads that you're going to count. And that's what you're going to be doing for this entire length. Now, how many beads you can pick up? I usually pick up between six and three. If I need to, I'll pick up, uh, you know, two or seven or whatever, but usually it's between six and three seed beads that I pick up. I'm going to do this until I get about just to the other end and then I'll join you back. Okay, I'm almost up to the very end. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six beads left. And that's an okay length. Um, I try to usually have like four beads left or whatever, but no big deal. If you have six or two or whatever, go for it. So I'm just going to pick up my last six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go up through the next bead in line, just like we did previously. And as you might imagine, what we're going to do is go down through the next bead. So I'm going down through the third. And this is what it looks like. So guess what we're going to do? We are going to go ahead and start up another row. And this time, since I've got two sixes going here, I think I want something like three beads. So I'm going to pick up three beads. And what am I going to do? You're right. I'm going to count down three. One, two, three. So my needle is going to go through this fourth bead. And you are, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to do this through the rest of this particular strand. I will go ahead and do that. And then, um, you know, this is the way we're going to do the rest of the bracelet. We're just going to keep going back and forth like this. But I'm going to show you how to um, tie on a new length of thread because I know you're going to need to do that. So um, when I join you back, it's going to be uh, to show you how to go ahead and end and begin a new thread. Time to show you how I end a thread and begin a new one. I'm about ready to end this one, so I still have it on its needle. And I've got a new piece of thread on a new needle. And what I'm doing is I am just going through the exact bead that uh, my old needle is coming out of. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go through a bunch of the old beads and in doing so this allows me to um, be at the spot where I want to be and also go back through some of these other beads and you know straighten them up or, or so to speak or it just anchors the new thread really well and then I'm going to do the same thing with the old thread. I'm going to take it and I'm going to weave it back in. I'll probably put a few half hitch knots along the way. And that will go ahead and end this thread and then start my new one. Okay, so I've made it to the other end and I've got my seven strands on. So what I'm going to do now is 
If you notice, this edge, which is the edge that I started on, looks relatively straight. And this edge, which is where I ended, looks a little on the ruffled side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down through this edge one more time with the uh, thread that I have left on my needle. And I'm going to fill in any wide gaps. So in other words, I'm going to make this side look more like this side. And in the meanwhile, I can also go through and if I see any like areas that uh, have too much of one color or something I just want to fix, I can go ahead and do that with this second pass down through. Now it's time to go ahead and do the clasp. I've already done this side, but I'll show you how to do this side. As you can see, I've already snugged my line up and I've got a new piece of thread coming out here. I'm coming out of the end bead. I'm going to pick up one size 12 or size 11 rather, and I'm going to go down through the next bead. Try not to get any of the beads underneath it. I'm going to go back up through the end bead. I'm going to put on another size 11, go through this one, and down again. And again, try to avoid any of the size 11s below the size 8. I'm going to come up now through the next one. And then what I'm going to do is pick up one size 12, or size 11, I don't know why I keep saying size 12. And I am going to put on the other edge of the clasp. Now usually when I go ahead and put on the other side of the clasp, I like to do the first one with it all clasped. That way I make sure that I'm not putting it on the wrong side. So, is, have I ever done that? Oh yeah. So I've got my size 11 on. I'm going up through the first part of my clasp, grab another size 11, and I'm going to go down through the same bead, the same size 8. So, and pull. Now at this point I can go ahead and separate the clasp because I know I've I've got it on going in the right direction. I'm going to come up through the next bead. So of the seven, this is going to be the middle bead. Let's see if I can get that in focus a little bit better for you. Sorry if it was out of focus. So I've got it coming up. I'm going to grab a size 11, go down into the same bead. So this is really the middle of the size 8's. Now I'm going to go up through the next size 8. And guess what? I'm going to grab a size 11. And by the way, make sure you go ahead and, and keep this this side of it um, snugged. <laughs> you just noticed that I had mine not snugged. It was all just dangling. Okay, I've got that. So another size 11 down through the same size 8. And this is going to be the tough one. Now, if for some reason you're having a hard time getting down through just the size 8 and you keep wanting to go down through the 11s, you can do that. Just go ahead and make sure you go down through the 11s, snake around, and then come up the next correct size 8. So my next correct size 8 is this next one. There we go. And again, just one bead, one size 11.
back up through the previous size 8. Keep going out of out of screen. I'm sorry about that, folks. It's this bead that is trying to defeat me. There we go. Grab another size 11. Go back through the same size 11. And down. And then at this point, what you're going to do is go back through and straighten anything up. For example, if you need to add more beads in right here, like this is looking way too far apart, then that's cool. All you have to do is add a third one and then go back down into this bead. Um, remember to go ahead and go through these loops at least two times. I like to say three times through these loops. Here we go. This is the finished bracelet. And, uh, you know, pick whatever colors that you like. Um, I think I said before, this is December when I'm filming this, so I decided to do kind of Christmassy colors. But um, I tell you, you can also use any of the color scheme you want. Uh, my first one that I made when I was trying to decide how to do this video was this one. And it's kind of a fallish or more of a fallish because it's uh, blue and brown. But, you know, pick whatever color combinations you really like and do whatever you like with this. I mean, it, it's a lot of fun and you can just have a blast with this. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, I hope you'll do so. Uh, this is Gail signing out saying have a great day. Bye.